Hey guys, today I want to explain how you can get a high paying US based job if you are an immigrant or a foreigner. If you are an immigrant to the USA already, or you are uh, living in another country other than the USA, I'm going to tell you all of the avenues and what are kind of going to be the roadblocks and how to overcome those roadblocks if you would like to get a high paying job that is based in the US. Or if you want a job that's based in Canada or, or Australia or something like that, it's probably going to be a similar process. I don't know those countries as well, so I can talk more about the US, um, but it's, it's probably going to be a similar process. So this is a question that I get fairly often because if you're not familiar with me, I run a program where I teach people how to become data analysts, right? Which is a very well paying, high demand job that has a lot of benefits. Like a lot of people really like the job. And there's, um, to there, there are many more jobs on the job market than there are people to work them. So it's a very high demand position for either immigrants to the country or uh, would like to work out of the US and and kind of ask me what to do. And so this video, I'm going to tell you exactly that. Now, there's really there's two factors to consider here. There are two things that um, that that you have to like two boxes that you have to check off before you're going to get hired as a data analyst or any high level position within the US. Um, number one is legal work status. You have to be legally allowed to be hired um, by a company like the company has to be allowed to hire you legally. And number two is communication. Basically, you have to be able to communicate effectively enough that you're going to be able to do a good job in the position and the communication difficulty is not going to uh, make that hard. So I'm going to get into uh, both of these in detail here. So first of all is the legal work status. Now, you need to have a work visa. Generally, um, you need to have a, a US work visa, whether you are in the country already, or if you would like, or if you're outside the country, and you would like to get in the country, you need to have a legal work visa in order to get a job working in the US. Now, I have a lot of people ask me, okay, well, what about a remote job, right? If I'm if I'm in another country, uh, can I work remotely for a US based company? And so the answer to that is it's a little bit tricky. Most of the time, unfortunately, the answer is no. And the reason for that is because there's all sorts of legal junk that the company has to work with, right? There's uh, every country has a bunch of labor laws about like, how you workers rights and how you're allowed to hire someone and what kind of time off you have to give them and what kind of benefits and in this big list of regulations um, that the company has to deal with and so a us based company in most cases is prepared to deal with those regulations in the us but they are not prepared to deal with those regulations in every other country around the world right i mean they have lawyers working with them on the us regulations but they probably don't have uh, lawyers working with them on all of the other countries' regulations. So unfortunately, that makes it difficult. The labor laws really get in the way. And it's, it's kind of ironic, actually. Like, whenever the government says that, hey, I'm doing this to protect you, uh, usually it's the opposite, right? If they, they create these labor laws to protect the laborers, well, really, it's just making it more difficult for you to get hired in the first place, probably making it so you get paid less. But it's a cheap and easy way for them to pretend like they're looking out for you so they keep on doing it. But anyway, that makes it difficult. Um, another thing that, that might be an issue is the time zones, right? So if you're in China, for example, and you want to work in the USA, well, if you want to work normal business hours in the USA, well, you're going to have to be staying up all night, right? And so wherever you are in the world, you have to coordinate the time zones. Now, there are some exceptions where even if you are a foreign national, even if you do not have a U.S. work visa, you can still work for a U.S. based company. And that is going to depend entirely on the company that's hiring. Right. Is the company that's hiring uh, prepared to deal with the labor laws in your country? And generally and sometimes they are. And usually that would be the case if it's a company that operates internationally. Right. So it might be a U.S. company. But um, let's say that you are in Canada and you'd like to work for a U.S. based company. Well, if that U.S. based company has a subsidiary company in Canada, does business in Canada and is already hiring people in Canada, then it's possible that even for a U.S. based job, they may be able to hire you as a remote worker in Canada because they already have that legal infrastructure 
built out. So um, it's not when I say like you can't get a remote job for a, a US based company, I don't mean that absolutely. In most cases, it's going to be difficult. But there are some cases if the company has a subsidiary in your home country, then you might be able to do it. In fact, I have a friend of mine who had exactly that situation. He had a, um, a work visa, a temporary work visa in the USA. So he, he got a job working for a US based company and then his work visa expired and he was unable to get it renewed. And so he had to move back to his home country of India. But thankfully, the, country, the company that he was working for was already doing business in India. So they were able to continue um, employing him while he was in India. And then the next year he reapplied for his work visa. He was it was granted that time and he was able to move back to the USA. So some companies do have that capability. So that begs the question, well, how do you get a work visa? Like, how do you get a USA work visa? And so this is something that um, I've I've explored in some detail. So I think I have a better idea of this than most people. But take take my advice with a grain of salt here, because, you know, there's new laws being created all the time. Regulations are always changing. So um, and I don't know everything about this topic. So so. I'm just going to give you kind of the overview from what I know. So there's a few ways to do it. Number one is to get sponsored. That is, get a company that is willing to um, fill out an application for you to get a work visa in the USA. So in order to do that, you have to find a company that's willing and knows how to do that, which is kind of a legal process. It's also expensive. So if you want to do that, you're probably going to have to take a pay cut because the company has to pay for your sponsorship. That's probably going to come out of your paycheck. And it really has to be a job where they can't find somebody within the USA to hire, right? Or they can't find someone in their local area to hire because it would be a lot easier to just hire somebody local than to hire somebody from out of the country. So it's in practice, it's pretty tricky to do this unless you have a really special skill set that the company really, really wants. So that's number one way is to get sponsored. Number two is to get married. I mean, obviously get married to an American citizen. That'll um, you can get a, a work visa that way. Uh, three is you can make an investment. I don't know how that works. I don't know any of the rules. But if you invest like a lot of money in the USA, you buy uh, real estate or you buy a business or something, then you can get a work permit that way. You can be get a student visa. This is probably the most popular way, like the most common way that people do it is they enroll in a college or university in the USA. And so that gives them a student visa, um, which allows them to study. And along with that student visa, they get what I believe is a six month um, work visa. So you can work for six months either during your studies or after your studies. And so that gives you a time to get get your foot in the door with the company and really increases your chance of getting that company to sponsor you. Because if the company really, really likes you and wants to keep you after six months, that's when they're going to be motivated to sponsor you. And then finally, the last type of um, work permit is for special abilities. So this is something you can apply for a special visa for um, I, I don't remember what it's called exactly, but if you have some sort of some very unique ability, you have some very unique value to the marketplace uh, in one way or another. So, for example, if you're like a famous musician uh, in another country and you want to tour in the USA, you can apply for that visa. Um, and there's I think it's really not very well defined. And um, a lot of it just comes down to how good your immigration lawyer is. Like if you really want that visa, you can and you're good at something, you can probably make it happen if you're willing to pay for it. But um, that's expensive and it, it is helpful if you know something specific or let's say you're a published scientist in some other part of the world. Right. And you're the only one that's the expert on that particular area, that kind of thing. So um, a lot of this is kind of you know, it's kind of up in the air. It's hard to say for sure whether you get it or not. But having a high demand skill will make it much easier for you um, it, pretty much any way you go. And, and this is true around the world, right? People like countries want to have valuable people with valuable skill sets coming into their countries. And so if you would like to immigrate into another country, then the the more of uh, high value, high demand skill set you have, the more likely that is to happen. 
So, okay, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much everything about the legal work status. Now let's get into communication because this is something that trips up a lot of people. If you want to be a data analyst, which again, this is what I teach. So if you're, if you're getting into a position where you really don't have to communicate at all, communication is not important, or you can get into a department where everybody else um, is, speaks the same foreign language as you. Like I've been in IT departments in, I had a, a company I used to work for. I went to the, um, the part of the building that was the IT department and it, literally every person there was Indian. Right. And so if those people uh, weren't able to speak English that well, it, it probably didn't matter that much because they were all they were working with other people from the same country anyway, so they could just speak their native language. But in most cases, if you have a position that requires a decent amount of communication, such as being a data analyst, because I mean, if you're a data analyst, you have to communicate your findings with the people that you're working for. Um, then if your English is not good and people don't understand you, that's going to be a problem. Uh, so you have to speak English fairly well. You don't have to be perfect, but you have to be able to communicate in a way that you can hold a conversation and, um, and the communication is not difficult either way. You have to be understandable is really, really important. And I think a lot of people are not so cognizant of. So if you have an accent because you came from another country, even if you speak English really well, even if you understand perfectly, even if you know all of the words and you know all of the grammar, um, if you have a strong accent and other people have a hard time understanding you, then that's going to make it difficult. Now, this is true in some cases, even for people who are native English speakers, right? So I speak with people from Nigeria occasionally that are, were, grew up speaking English, but they speak English with such a different accent that it's hard for me to understand them. And if it's hard for me to understand them, even though I talk with people from there fairly often, then it's going to be even more difficult for a hiring manager to understand them. And so um, if you're in that situation, you have to find a way to reduce that accent and, and speak in a way that's more understandable to Americans. Or obviously, if you immigrate anywhere else in the world, it's going to be the same thing for the place to which you immigrate. And this is a big thing. This really trips up some people because what happens essentially if you're in this situation is that people will call you for an interview, right? You have a good resume, you're qualified, you have the skills that you'll get called for interviews. They'll interview you and then they'll have a hard time understanding you or a hard time communicating with you. And then they'll just never call you back, right? They'll just say, oh, we decided to hire somebody else. And they will never tell you why they didn't hire you, which has got to be extremely frustrating. But the way that that companies are in the US is that everybody is scared to death of discrimination, right? Everybody is scared to be accused of discrimination, um, like, you know, discrimination against immigrants or discrimination against a certain race or people from a certain part of the world. Everybody is just obsessed with this idea of discrimination. We have these anti-discrimination laws, which are, of course, impossible to enforce fairly because nobody knows when someone is discriminating. They're, you're like, they're pretending that the government can read the person's mind and figure out when they're discriminating, which of, of course they can't. And so what people do is they, they are so afraid of, of looking like they're discriminating is that they don't tell you why. Because if they tell you, I didn't hire you because your English isn't good enough or because I couldn't understand you because of your accent, um, then they're, they're putting themselves at risk of a lawsuit for discrimination like this is another way that these these labor laws that are supposed to help you do anything but right because then you don't get honest feedback they just never call you back and they never tell you why right so i'm telling you if if you uh have an accent if you are from another part of the world this may very well be why if you're difficult to understand so if that's the case or if you're not sure i would highly recommend talk to someone who is an American, native born American, and ask them honestly, how easy or how difficult is communicating with me? Like, do you understand what I say? Having an accent is really not a problem unless it's such a strong accent that people can't understand you, right? If you say things a little differently, that's fine as long as people can understand you and as long as you can understand them. 
But you want to ask someone that you trust because the actual hiring managers and the recruiters are never going to tell you the truth because, again, they're afraid of being accused of discrimination. So um, if that's the case and you decide that, okay, maybe my English communication is not as good as it could be, maybe that's what's holding me back, I I'll give you some ideas of how to improve. So first of all, learning a new language is difficult, right? If you're, if you're trying to get a job speaking a language that is not your native language, that's not an easy thing to do. I understand. I mean, I, I lived in South America for almost a year. Um, I speak Spanish and Portuguese, and I've, I've been through all this, so I get it. And so I'm, what I'm going to give you here is actually the, um, the strategies that I use for when I'm having to uh, live in a country where English is not, the, or where I'm speaking a language that is not my native language. So one thing you can do that's really, really helpful, watch English language movies and TV shows, preferably from the country that you're going to, uh, right, the U.S., because... If you're if you want to live in the U.S., then the um, or you are living in the U.S., then U.S. English is a little different than British English, is a little different than Australian English, etc. So you want to get used to the dialect of English that you're going to be around. So watch um, U.S. movies and TV shows with English subtitles, right? Because what the subtitles do is they help you relate the the words on the page to the sound of the words, right? And and so that'll really help you improve your English um, if you're not a native English speaker. Obviously, if you're a native English speaker, you don't have to do that. Uh, another thing that's really, really helpful is just have conversations, you know, find ways to have conversations with native speakers of English and particularly Americans if you want to, you know, if you want to work in America. Um, another thing that is, is really, really helpful if you have an accent and you need to reduce your accent or maybe um, if your English is pretty good, but you still have a hard time with people understanding you, is to watch videos or watch movies, again, with the dialect of the place that you're going. So the US movies or US uh, videos, you can use mine if you like. You can watch my videos on YouTube. I got a lot of them. After every sentence or every phrase of the video, pause the video and then say that phrase back as close as you possibly can to the way that the person just said it, right? And so you want to, obviously you want to choose people that are native um, American English speakers in the videos. And obviously you want to choose people who are native uh, speakers of American English or whatever dialect you're going for and copy them as exactly as you possibly can. Try to mimic the sounds that they make as precisely as you possibly can and just do it a sentence at a time. Listen to them say the sentence, pause, you say the sentence. Listen to the next sentence, pause, you say the sentence. And if you have a hard time saying it, just say the sentence over and over and over again until you get it, right? And so once you get used to that, then your your accent will gradually fade. Probably won't go away completely, but again, you don't it doesn't have to go away completely. You just want to be understandable. So these are the main obstacles um, for, for working in the U.S. if you're a foreigner or immigrant. So legal work status, communication, and then once you have those down, then really the, the big thing that you need, that everybody needs, even if they're an American citizen, is to learn the skills in order to, the, the skills that are required to get a high paying job. And so that's what I teach uh, full time in my data analyst program. And so if you're interested in a career as a data analyst or you just want to learn a little bit more about it and you live in either the U.S. or Canada, then I will put a link in the description below where you can get a free training that will tell you what being a data analyst is all about, how you can learn it, basically what you need to get into the market, and of course, why it's such a great job opportunity right now, why it's in such huge demand in the job market. So click below to get that free training if you're interested. Now. I don't know how to work with countries outside of the U.S. and Canada because the U.S. and Canada are the job markets that I understand, right? And so, you know, if you ask me, like, are there job, are data analyst jobs in South America? Well, probably, but I don't know what they are. I don't know how they operate. I don't know what requirements are to get into them. I don't know what skill sets they're looking for, right? So I'm, I'm really not qualified to, to help you with that very much. Um, 
But if you are, you have the legal work authorization in the US or Canada, then I can help you with that. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon besides the subscribe button so you get all my future videos first. Leave me a comment if you uh, enjoyed this or if you have any, any questions or, or anything that um, you want to add and um, share this video with anybody that you think it would be helpful for. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you might also enjoy this video as well.